Prepare yourself guys, we're almost at the end. Hey guys, Masako X here. We round up What If Week for June with the finale of one of the most popular series of videos on this channel. What if Kid Goku went Super Saiyan? Over the past four videos, we have covered everything, right from the moment when Krillin died in the original series of Dragon Ball, right up to just before the Boo Saga starts in Z. For the most part, things have been pretty straightforward and pretty positive for our heroes. However, we still have to tie everything up in a nice, neat package, because just leaving it open-ended like that on just four parts would have just been a bit of a disservice to you guys. There have been a lot of things that have diverged from the original story, and I feel like we need to address them. I could have just done a short paragraph, but that's just not fair, nor is it right so you guys deserve a full video. As we covered at the end of the fourth part, Goku's power gap to the others, which has been extremely vast throughout the course of the series, has now actually diminished, and there's really not that much in it now between him, Gohan, and Vegeta. You might think that because of this, the whole scenario has been negated, and that there's no point covering it anymore. But there is still the matter of tying up all the loose ends, so tough. We are gonna do it. So we begin proceeding seven years after the previous edition. Gohan is a teenager and he is much stronger than he is in the anime. And really towards the end of the Buu saga in the anime, he was pretty strong. So essentially he's on the level that he was when he was as ultimate Gohan in the show, right at the beginning of this Buu arc scenario. There's a lot of difference in power. He's pretty much level pegging with his father with the added bonus and the potential of a human Saiyan cross. There's a lot of stuff untapped right now. Has his personality and his application toward his studies changed at all? Well, Gohan is much more disciplined than his father, so I believe that he is still a bookworm. And really his personality? I think it should be similar to what he is currently in the universe survival arc. He has managed to find a balance between fighting and studying. He is a whole new man. He is completely different and at peace with himself. That Gohan is the perfect blend which we shall use in this scenario. Vegeta, through sheer determination and application, has managed to close the power gap between him and Goku, which in part 4 and prior to that had been immense, but now it's pretty much what it was at the beginning of the Buu Saga, or maybe beyond that. In the original anime around the time of the Buu Saga, Vegeta had been slacking because he had no real motivation. His arch nemesis and rival had just scurried off to the other world to train, leaving him behind. But since Goku's around, he's actually had a sparring partner, which has been compelling. So his motivation is way up. He's pretty mentally serene. Well, as serene as you can get being Vegeta. Gohan still goes to high school, as Chi Chi believes that it's best for his studies to progress, as well as gain some new social skills. So that means Gohan can get a job, as well as find a partner. Now I bet you're wondering, does Gohan still become the great Saiyan man? Of course he does. He was exposed to the Ginyu Force as a child. All that pomposity, eccentricity, and flamboyance, it has to be channeled somehow, so, so why not let Gohan have it? Deep down, he's just a big soft nerd. Let him have his fun. Another constant is that Gohan's relationship with Videl starts off just as clumsily as it does in the original anime. Videl gets into Gohan's life through manipulation, blackmail, and overall jerkery. Isn't that sweet? The stuff of legendary romances? I think what would have been different though, is that the whole training sequence with Videl learning to fly, it could have been a lot funnier since Goku's around. Goku could have actually been quite enthusiastic that someone else is wanting to train and that Gohan's found a new pupil. Goku would have just been giddy with excitement. For example, when Gohan is trying to teach Videl how to take off from the ground, Goku could then chime in by overdoing it, causing an immense whirlwind that sends Videl flying. Now, Videl is a tough cookie being the daughter of Mr. Satan and all, and she is way more powerful than the average human, but even that's too much for her. She is sent flying. After Gohan begs his father to just take it down a notch, the rest of the lessons carry on as per normal. Goten and Trunks' friendship is as strong as ever, with the big difference being that Goten is a lot more confident than he is in the anime. Since Goku is around all the time, since he didn't die, Goten doesn't have to be a facsimile of Goku. He can be his own person, which is great for him. As such, he is much more enthusiastic, much more playful, but just as polite as he was before. This therefore means that he's not Trunks' lackey anymore. He is not being overruled by someone else. 
Their friendship is actually pretty equal. We then jump to the 25th Tenkaichi Budokai, with pretty much all the cast being there, except that Goku isn't dead, number 18 isn't there since Krillin didn't get to know her since she was absorbed by a semi-perfect cell and he was later destroyed by Goku and the others, and Piccolo is of course not there, for reasons that we touched on in part 1. Oh well! Goten and Videl have mastered the art of flying thanks to Goku and Gohan, and he and Videl's relationship has romantically blossomed like it does in the show. The junior tournament takes place as per normal, with the big difference being that Goten wins the tournament instead of Trunks, thanks to his newfound confidence and ability and skill. He is much more determined than his canon self, and Trunks notices that he is just no match for Goten and congratulates him. Trunks is quite impressed that Goten isn't a pushover, and as a result, the entire Mighty Mask debacle doesn't happen. We then see Shin, the Supreme Kai, show up, and he has his match with Krillin instead of Piccolo because, again, Piccolo isn't there, and he just dominates Krillin by outsmarting him out of the ring. As Shin is walking away from the stadium, Goku compliments the Supreme Kai for his skills, and this is where Shin makes himself known. He tells Goku everything, that he is the Supreme Kai, that there are other Kais, and just the whole universe and the other world has been opened up to Goku. Since Goku never died and never explored the other world properly, he thought that King Kai was the be-all and end-all, so this just blows Goku's mind. We of course then get Spopovich and Yamu, and Spopovich knocking Videl senseless, which I still don't like, as well as Gohan powering up and then getting drained by Yamu, and them escaping with Gohan's energy to revive Majin Buu. But because of that, Shin and the others are able to track Barbadi and Deborah back to their spaceship. Here, Shin explains the entire threat that is Majin Buu, and how Barbadi and Deborah must be stopped at all costs. Deborah then senses the presence of our heroes and demands that they show themselves, or else he'll destroy the entire area. Krillin and Kibito offer to act as distractions, that means the others can just keep track of what's going on. But this doesn't really go that well, and the pair end up either being turned into stone or getting themselves killed. The subsequent fights between Yakon and Pui Pui occur as per normal, with Vegeta taking out Pui Pui and Goku overwhelming Yakon with great energy. They really don't pose much of a threat. Back at the Tenkaichi Budokai, Mr. Satan dominates and wins the tournament! Since number 18 isn't there, and Trunks and Goten haven't donned the Mighty Mask gear, there is no contest. Hooray! Our savior is unopposed! Here is the biggest difference. There is no Margin Vegeta. Why is that, Masako? Since Gohan in this What If is a lot more battle savvy than he is in the anime, a lot of things have changed in terms of Vegeta's psyche and overall brashness. It all stems from the fight between Gohan and Deborah, which in this case goes much more smoothly. Having witnessed the demon god use his stone saliva trick, he is wise to that move and easily dodges the saliva spittoons as they are pointed at his direction. He manages to outsmart the demon and ultimately takes him out. So okay Masako, why doesn't Vegeta become Margin Vegeta? Well, Vegeta's transformation was fueled by A his frustration at Gohan's lack of ability against Deborah in the original anime, b the fact that Barbadi and Deborah in secret were actually discussing Vegeta's potential as a strong candidate for mind control, and c the prince's frustration at Goku's domination. Since the power gap is much smaller now, that frustration is nowhere near as potent. As well as the fact that A and B's events never really happened in this scenario. Vegeta's mental state is much more stable, and he congratulates Gohan for his efforts against Debora. Barbadi is left to fend off three Super Saiyans. Fortunately for the mage, since Gohan is a lot more stronger now than he was in the anime, the energy that was drained from him earlier is a lot more fruitful and this means that there is just enough power for Majin Buu to be unlocked. The sealed ball is opened up, and we are now exposed to Majin Buu. Uh-oh. But, as Goku and Vegeta are not bickering amongst themselves and are present for Majin Buu's awakening, there is a lot more that can be done here. They can at least take action immediately against Barbadi, with Vegeta doing the honours, silencing the little wizardy brat once and for all. There's still the business of taking out Majin Buu though. Vegeta's tactic of verbal abuse against the pink jolly genie does work, and it does get the genie to focus on the matter at hand of, you know, fighting. And he proves to be quite formidable. All of their attacks are ultimately useless because Majin Buu can regenerate, so if you fire through him, he's just gonna come back. Fortunately though, all three of the Super Saiyans are present and correct, 
and they are relatively at full power. After many minutes of individually trying to take out Boo through different means and execution, Gohan then concludes at the fact that they all need to work together because individually they won't be able to take him out because he'll just come back like rubber. So they have to do a combined effort. Otherwise they'll just be wasting energy. Vegeta reluctantly agrees. Now just because he's less angry and frustrated than before doesn't mean he's going to take Gohan's orders with good grace. Together they unleash a full power Big Bang Kamehameha which vaporizes every single trait of Majin Buu. There is nothing left. Now you might think that this is ultimately convenient since there are three Super Saiyan 2s that are a lot stronger than before. But they have all mastered the form and they don't have to deal with the issue that is Margin Vegeta. There is not that distraction there. So that means they can actually concentrate on the matter at hand, your Margin Buu, and act as a collective unit and prove much more efficient. The day is saved. Sadly though, we don't get to see the friendship that is Mr. Satan and Margin Buu unfold and that is a bit of a shame. He doesn't really get to become the hero of everyone that he deserves to be. But don't worry, Mr. Satan will always be the savior in my mind. He will always be in my heart. As for the rest of the arc, things pretty much return to normality. Videl and Gohan's relationship blossoms. Goten and Trunks continue to be silly kids. Sadly, there's no Gotenks though, because fusion never happened. But Vegeta's friendship with Goku never really materializes. It just stays at a constant level of rival and kind of ally it doesn't really go anywhere from there that's the shame so yeah we've now reached the point of the story where we skip forward 10 years to the end of z we are about to have another tenkaichi budokai but wait there's a big difference here one last big change there is no oob since kid boo never showed up we never actually got to see the reincarnation present itself at the tenkaichi budokai so what does that mean well, something that I touched upon in a previous What If Lightning Round could be the idea that Pan takes Oob's place as Goku's next pupil. Goku would put all of his attention and focus in training Pan to become much stronger than she is presently. Pan does show tremendous fighting skill and aptitude in the kids tournament, so she is the perfect candidate for Goku to concentrate on. She is also really enthusiastic about fighting, so I think it would make for compelling viewing. That, and she's just as cute as a button. With that, the story ends. Now you might be wondering where Super figures in all of this, and I just have to say bluntly that I have decided in this case to omit Dragon Ball Super from this scenario. I am going to wait until such a time that Dragon Ball Super has finished, or at least has progressed far enough, that means we can actually make some well-educated guesses without any new revelations occurring. Although, quite honestly, I don't think much will change in Dragon Ball Super in this scenario from what we actually see in the show. I mean, I could be wrong, the power gaps and the lack thereof, as well as Gohan's aptitude to well as fighting and being balanced, but I am still gonna wait until Super is over before we investigate this again. So for now, we are done. Wow, what a journey. We have seen Goku lead his team by a country mile only for the power gap to be reduced and actually be on equal footing with Gohan and Vegeta and making a really constructive and efficient team. Well, I mean, except for Krillin because he never really got number 18 as a partner. He's kind of still alone. Well, who knows? Maybe Marin shows up again in his life, so that might happen. Yeah, let's just let that happen. Throw the guy a bone. He's had a lot of issues. Thank you all for your support throughout this entire scenario. I couldn't have done it without your feedback and help because you guys have picked out many issues that have actually arisen from mistakes that I might have made and I was able to correct them to make something that has been truly entertaining and fun to research. I wonder if we'll actually come up with another scenario that has actually garnered just as much hype as this one. Who knows or dares to dream? Let's hope so. So what did you guys think? Did you like the scenario on the whole? Was there something I've missed that I've not covered and you'd like me to cover in a follow-up video maybe further on down the line? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and this series. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later.